I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's Chris Thorne. And this is the 30 Days Survival Challenge, Texas. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. Yeah. <sighs> Good morning. Oh, steaming the camera up. Ooh, it is cold, 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 and my happy rocks, the camera keeps steaming up, it's so cold and my breath is so warm, my happy rocks have run out of heat, had to change them over once in the night, wasn't too bad though, they kept me nice and warm. But now they've run out of heat again. I think that means it's time to get up and get going. Get the fire going, get warm. Got stuff to do. I got a 50 caliber air rifle that needs sighting in so I can go hunting tonight. Yeehaw. Coffee's got its own hot rock. There's survival, and then there's just thriving in whatever environment you're in. <laughs> now my last sip of coffee will be just as warm as my first sip, no matter how long I take to get to it. <laughs> ah, this is so much fun, I love playing in the woods. Man, oh man, I have got to get that air rifle sighted. I mean, we're joking about this, this uh, windbreak being a blind. But here I am sitting here, reading my Bible, drinking my coffee, and I look over, and there's a big old buck, like, 70 feet away. And he's still grazing right along here. I could be right behind the blind with the air rifle. And, uh, oh, no, he's right over there watching me talk about him. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Come strolling through here tomorrow once I've sighted it in, and you're gonna be in my living room. <laughs> beautiful place, beautiful place, Texas. Ah, oh, love it, love it. Make us some raccoon cracklings for breakfast here. Throw them in the pan, and shaving it off of the hide and some off the body here. We got all these chunks of fat. Put them on my new pan hook I got here and get them into the fire and get them frying up for some breakfast. All right, 
cracklings are done. Get my pot handle out of there. Take those out. I'm gonna try and fry up some crawdads next. Ooh. A little wadobo on all of it. Oh yeah. Oh, this looks so good. I'm excited. I've never had a fried breakfast. Right? This is, this this is, is our first like fried breakfast out here. I think the cracklins turned out a little bit on the dark side. Yes. All right, say grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Bless this food to our body. Help us to get more food. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, I need to try one of these out first before I get all cray-cray with it. <laughs> get cray-cray with the cray-crays? Oh, look at the fat drip out of their bodies when you try to poke the meat out. They definitely fried up in the fat. Well, wow, there isn't a lot of meat. Mmm. Tastes much better though. Oh yeah. It tastes like, like they've been buttered. Oh, that is so juicy. There is like so much. Oh. There's, there's a lot of munchness to this. Yeah, the cracklings are definitely further along than last time. Let me just go. Ooh, fried crawdads. That is a good idea. Mmm. Well, hard to show you. Not much to see. They're just mm. little fried up bits of fat. They're just crawfish, but man, are they good fried well, now up Now they're like fried. This. Fried crawfish. Mmm. The whole flavor dynamic changes. They are not the same anymore. They are drastically and ferociously improved. I wish you could just eat the whole thing the way you can like with a, a shrimp, you know? Like, just crunch it shell and all when you fry them up real good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I'm gonna try it. See what happens. Oh, eat the whole thing? Yeah, I'm gonna eat the whole little tail and shell in there. Mmm. It actually works. There you uh, go. I don't know if I'd try it with a really big one, but the softer ones, tinier ones. Crunch it right up with the shell. Oh. And that hit the spot, not having to pick at it. Mm. But of course, I'm a weirdo. When I eat peanuts, like every tenth peanut, I like to eat it with the shell and chew the whole shell up. Yeah, I'd call that weird. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be some on my channel like, I do that too. I'm not weird. That's not weird, that's the way you're supposed to eat them. What are you talking about? I eat all of mine with the shell on. Mmm. Ooh, try one with the, the smallest one with it, just eating the whole thing. It really is good. It doesn't taste like there's anything there. Mmm. Dude, this is actually like popcorn shrimp now. Yeah, very good. Crawdad fried in raccoon fat. Now we got all this fat. What are we gonna do with it next? I used some of this earlier. There's a fire. And starter. restarted the fire. I was like, had it all going a little bit of flame. Ooh. Yeah, you don't need lighter fluid. That's a, it's a myth. Just Ooh, it tastes really good. Deer tenderloins. Or stew a rabbit, and because there's no fat on them, then take it out and throw all the meat in here and fry it up. Whoa, dude, think about it. Work oh. with me. Fried turkey. Oh, fried turkey. Oh, that is within our grasp, actually. 
Or a deep fried turkey. Oh, we don't have that much fat. <laughs> but we can we can slice off pieces. Mm-hmm. Have fried turkey legs or something. That's that's oh. not, that's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Nothing like some fried. Oh. We can bushcraft our way into anything. We're not gonna waste the top parts of the crawdads. After we have a cup of soup, I'm gonna throw them in there. And just like our crawdad soup and stuff at the beginning of the series, which if you haven't seen it and you're just watching this first one so far, there's a playlist link below for my channel, and so you can watch it all, catch up on it. And there's also a playlist down there for Chris's channel, where you can watch his everyday part of the adventure from his aspect, because he's been doing different stuff. I went out and got some game with my slingshot. He went out and got some game with traps and blowguns. It's awesome. You want to watch the whole thing. I'd be talking more, but I'm eating. Mm. If I couldn't have just eaten the whole... I'm going to have to try that later. Fry up the really tiny ones. Just fry the entire crawfish up. And kind of like eating a soft shell crab. Just eat, eat the entire thing. Well, I don't want to use that side of the cardboard. It's got splattered cactus all over it. I'm shooting through it yesterday. All right. Time to rig up the dragon claw and pump it up and uh, sight it in. I actually set a target over there and I think with the bipod on it, I can use this table as a perfect shooting stand to zero in the scope. It's a digital scope, so that'll be interesting. It, you basically shoot it once and then you digitally move the mark to where it hit and then it sights it, sets it for you and you can set different ranges on it. I'll show you when I get into that part. But first, let's get all the stuff on too. See if we can't get the stuff onto the rifle that needs to be there. Some assembly required. I know, let's do it like this. There we go, she's all assembled. And so is the pump, the hand pump. That's one of the reasons I picked this 50 caliber air rifle because you can pump it up by hand. Leave it in the comments below. How many pumps does it take to get to the center of this Tootsie Pop? Three, two, one. Forty-six, and just in the green now. One hundred. I'm one fifth of the way to full at a hundred pumps. One more notch for fifty pumps. Two hundred. One more notch. How two many notches you gotta go. Two notches to go. So basically, 300 pumps to pump this bad boy up, unless there's an exponential rate of some sort. Forty. Three. <laughs> two forty. Is it getting harder? It's like, getting a lot harder. Yeah. This is almost in the green. I mean, the red. And this. Oh, 40, because it's exponentially coiling up, so. Yeah, it's all the pressure. I'm only like 30 pumps, or to 40 pumps away. Uh, 280. 280 does it. I need a bit of hydration. That was a lot. <laughs> you should play Eye of the Tiger next time you pump. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. There we go. Undo the bleed valve on the pump. Kneel on the thorns. Ouch. Pump is set. I'll put the cap on the both of them. Ow. Kneeled right in the heat. Ow. 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 All right, she's all ready to roll. Scope's on her. Got her on our kitchen table slash shooting bench. 
Yeah, my Athlon Optics rangefinder. It's a 1200 yard rangefinder. This is probably one of the better ones on the market. It's very clear. Time six magnification, and we'll be able to help get him ranged in quick, fast, and in a hurry. So we've got targets downrange there. We got the archery target right there at what was that 30 yards uh yeah the archery targets at 30 yards and the the cardboard shooting targets at 40. yeah so we're gonna play around with the bullets first and sight in the scope you have presets so you can have a preset for your arrows preset for a different rifle preset for a different weight and grain bullets at different uh different distances so i'm gonna get that set up and see if i can't bring the accuracy out of this thing that this thing is supposed to have so i can be safe to hunt for those of you that didn't watch yesterday when the Dragon Claw air rifle was delivered by a drone and it came with some of these slugs that are pretty crazy looking. Got a hollow point and they look more like a nut to go on the end of a bolt than anything else. But I'm going to sight in with these and then I'll do the target with the arrows. Slide the chamber open, pop one in the chamber. It's a huge slug. That's a huge. That's that's a big pellet for an air rifle. Yeah, 50 caliber. Yeehaw! I feel like I'm got like an anti anti aircraft gun here. I'm working with. Oh, safety's on. You got to take the safety off. Full power. And now I have to take a shot, and then I adjust it on the scope, and then I can. Uh, then it'll zero in. I can't even tell where I hit. Oh, I found where I hit. Way down here. This was yesterday's shots at a closer range with the round balls aiming here and hitting here, 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 and here. So I'm gonna mark these off. Let's see what that does. All right, so I've zeroed it with one shot just because it was that low. New scope and all, that's to be expected, I think. I'm gonna try one more shot again and see if it needs a re-zeroing. Let's see how I did. <laughs> oh, that was the circle I drew, and that's the hole it made. One shot zeroing. I haven't played around with rifles very much for a long time, but uh, I say I still got it. Now, it might be the technology. That thing, that's pretty accurate to be able to digitally zero like that. I put the, in the digital, I wish I could show you. I can't show you in the camera because it won't record the, the zeroing. But you take one X and you put it right where you're aiming. And you put the other one down here on that shot that was a foot and a half low. And you hit save and boom, it's zeroed to exactly 40 yards dead on right in the exact center where I was aiming. That was Awesome. Now let's try an arrow. See if it still zeroes the same way or if I need to make another preset to work out in the scope because that's capable of doing that. This neat, neat scope. Time for an arrow. Place the butt of the arrow in and then fold the feathers all so they're in the, all in the same direction. If we get a little twist. There we go. And down the arrow. And then a broadhead could normally go on to here, right? But I'm not doing that on the practice target, so I could just press it in until it seats good. And there's a special thing for broadheads that you can help push them in. Arrow hit low. And about two or three inches. I'm gonna try it one more time. Let's see how much air she's used. Two shots on high power and one arrow. I am down one notch of the five notches. So that's basically three shots per notch. That's 15, that's about 15 shots I should be able to get out of this at high power. So I could do low power for smaller stuff. Very cool. Okay, that hit a lot lower on low power. I think I, it's going to be, whew. This thing is pushing out 410 feet per second with those arrows. And more than that, it presses out 890 with the slug, and the arrows... I think they're like I, 430 I think they're like second. 600. Okay, I was like, they're extremely fast. Yeah, they're fast. You pull the trigger and it's already at the target. 
That's what it feels like. All right. Oh, that would knock down an elk. One more shot, this time at high power at the upper right hand target. Holy moly, look at how far they sank right in. So this was the first one aiming right here and hit right here. The second one a low power aiming here and hit right here. Last one high power again and hit this distance. So pretty much the same distance down and a little bit off to the right for the arrows. And they're big slug heads that uh, um, means it's gonna take some pulling to get them out. This could be a problem. Those big slug heads, they on the inside they're like stuck in the target. Hmm. I have to do some sort of an operation. Wait, that one came. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's just a process of back and forth and wiggling. Those heads are so big. No wonder they didn't want to come out. Hopefully it worked. I zeroed it for the arrows. And. I think I just lost my first arrow. Because it went like through the target and who knows where else. Well, I don't see it in the target. Which I didn't think I would. I heard some sort of a rattling. Back of the target. I heard some sort of rattling off over there. After a shot. That's a bummer. One arrow down. I guess that's what you should expect when you're shooting something at that speed. Yeah, bounce off a few things. For sure. That's uh, one disadvantage, I think, with the arrows, man, at moving at such a speed. It, to go through a crossbow target, which is used to 400 feet per second arrows, is, and, and arrows that have just the small practice tips, so they're finer, whereas these are giant slugs at the end. Wait, the knock was at the bottom of the target? Yeah, on the back side, got pulled off the arrow as it went through. I'm gonna try and zero the arrows at low power and use them only at low power so that I don't just destroy them every time. You've already shot lead? Yeah, again. Oh, so you're taking eight shots. Okay, eight. So this will be nine. Because I decided to start stop shooting the arrows at high power and zero them at, at on a low power setting. They just punch through the target and disappear otherwise. There we go, low power, zeroed for arrows. Shooting at the top right hand. Down into the right still. Well, they're perfectly sighted in if I'm intending a deer to drop and, and bounce that way. So I was aiming here with this one, aiming here with this one, and here with this one. That's all. Got to work on that. So since it's a digital scope, I've noticed something. When you do zero it, you bring it down and over, it actually just moves the digital crosshairs to a new position. It sets them there. So you actually lose some of your screen. You're not aiming right down the center of the screen. Which I guess that's not a big deal. As long as it hits accurately, I think I got it zeroed again. Let's see. This is the one, I can feel it. Can't complain with that. One more for good luck. Oh yeah, that's zeroed. That's zeroed. Ha <laughs> ha. 
shots. That was the last shot. A zero to here and a zero to there. So, and then I did it one more time. And I think I got it. I think I got it figured out. There may be a little play in the arrows when you shoot them because they're arrows and they're being lobbed at such a high speed, but I think, yeah, whew, that's nice, that's nice. That'll work, that'll do, that'll do, pig. Air rifle hunt tomorrow morning, yee And our smoked raccoon is pretty smoked and pretty dry, so it's gonna make it even easier for me to cut them up and get them into the pots. Might look a little gross to you guys, but it's just smoked meat. Smoked, smoked, smoked. So much fat on this thing. So much fat. So I'm gonna take, oh, the meat is firmed up too from the smoking. See if I can't disassemble this guy into his meat, meaty components. There we go. Nicely cut off, look at that beautiful red, Meat, oh, I'm trying to touch the screen like it's my other camera. Red meat with just a rind of fat around it. That will make a beautiful cooked up. Uh-oh, does it fit in there? Oh, it just barely fits in the pot. He's a big one. He was a big one. You have those for dinner, big old raccoon drumsticks. That's a much bigger raccoon. And he laughed at me when I said I wanted to bring a big old, like, witch's cauldron there for our meat to go in. Because, like, yeah, like, we're gonna need that big. We get a deer, we're gonna be busy, busy, busy cutting and drying pieces and smoking pieces to preserve them and keep them from the bugs. And we had a big old cauldron, at least half of it could be diced up, worked down, and gone right into the cauldron. Look at that big old hunk of fat. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a raccoon tenderloin. Get one more of those out. Toss it in there with the legs and all that fat and let those pieces stew up. Smaller chunks of easy, easily picked out meat for a tender juicy dinner. Smoked raccoon tenderloins. Fire's going, the raccoon backstrap stew, and tenderloin raccoon stew is going on right there. The rest of the raccoon I couldn't fit in the pot is still smoking, we'll use that later. And all the other parts and pieces are in here, we'll stew those overnight for breakfast. Got quite the feast going on. And earlier I was like, oh, it's getting dark, I gotta stop shooting. But then I'm like, Dee! I have a night vision scope. I'm gonna have to try this thing out. So that flashlight shining off the end of the rifle, you can't see with the naked eye. Only these cameras with the night vision can pick it up. It's pretty neat. Until I look through the scope, it's completely dark outside to me. All right, ready? Here we go. Knock it. <laughs> Find the target. Oh, that is nice. Oh, that is loud. <laughs> Ooh, I have no night vision now after looking through the night vision scope. All right, those are my last two shots. That's not too bad. That's not too bad in the dark. Still not right there. Earlier when I sighted it in, I was like, boom, and I hit it right there when it was sighted in, so. I don't know what that's all about. I still drop a deer. Yeah, it's only two inches off. 
but I want to be right there. I'll have to play around with it tomorrow more. All right, dinner is served. Look at that. It's all cooked down to a, that yellow is all just all fat cooked down there. All the bits of tender backstrap are just floating in that and cooking in all the juices. Mmm. And the crawdads to add the crawdad soup for broth is what I put it all in to cook. These legs will probably be a little bit tough just yet. But there's tons of meat that I already cut up and put in there so it would come apart. Oh. Wow, that's hot steam coming off the top of that. Yeah? Whew. Oh. so cold out here. This is just like, uh, tonight's supposed to be the last night of it being really, really cold. Thank goodness. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Yep. Mm-hmm. That hits the spot. I'm going to sit by the fire and eat mine. We definitely nailed it with the old raccoon cutting up the pieces, cooking like that, smoke them. I can almost taste the smoky flavor of it, smoking, because it's been smoking for almost a day by the time I cubed it up and put it in there. Mm -hmm. It really adds a lot to it, smoking it for that long, I think. And variety, when we've already had one coon before, and possum. But if we had known it was going to be this cold, though, what would have been enjoyable is if we had built a shelter. <laughs> Look up. However, I'm going to go take this awesome cup. This is my titanium cup from uh, Heavy Cover. And go... Sit by the fire, With huh? my sprongs and sit by the fire. Mmm. Ah, oh, so good. Alright, I am in bed. Got the hot rocks in the under quilt underneath of me and I got the hot rocks wrapped up in the shirt at my toes again it's supposed to be really cold I might even be wearing my jacket to bed tonight I mean, it's like it's supposed to be 33 degrees sleeping bags ready to 30 that means you can survive but you're not gonna be comfortable so with the hot rocks, I will be comfortable. may have to change them out at like 4 in the morning, but I got more in the fire for that. So I'm wicked excited to have the rifle, but a little nervous at the same time. And I think if you're watching the video, you see that like I'm not all jumping for joy and all super excited about it. Because it's so neat and everything, but I haven't really had a lot of time to play with it. I'd really like to know it a lot better. I mean, I never, I never shot my slingshot at a single piece of the game for over a year until I was like confident of my shooting and even now I'm learning that I'm not all that super excellent at it when it comes to shooting in the dark things in the dark I've shot a couple rabbits since I've been here and missed I'm not a good uh, night shot I need to practice that so I'm gonna have to go home work on that but uh, it's all about growing learning having new adventures and that's what we're doing here so I'm gonna go to bed I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.